guys, welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be a video where I talk about high-end products that everyone loves and raves about that I just don't care for, that are not my absolute favorite. As I go through, I'll explain to you why it's not necessarily my favorite and why I think it's overhyped, but I hope you guys find this video helpful so that way, you know, when you're seeing really hyped up products on YouTube, you can kind of hear the pros and cons in this video maybe. And yeah, some of the products um, that I mentioned, I actually have returned to the store. So I only have about half of the products that I'm going to talk about. I think I have five or six products I'm going to talk about. So I have three products to show you guys in person and the other ones, I will just pop up a picture right here in the corner so you guys can see the picture of the product that I'm talking about. And also, this is one of my last videos with my little fall background, with my little fall leaves and this Harvest Blessings pumpkin that I absolutely love. I got it at um, Michael's. So yeah, um, I have a couple pre-filmed videos um, that I'm gonna upload, but this is the last one that I'm filming with my fall background, and then pretty soon I'm gonna be hunting down at Michael's and various stores, a nice wintry, Christmassy perhaps background. So yeah, mm, bye fall. Anyways, let's dive into the video. So the first product I'm going to mention is a very pricey product, in my opinion, for a foundation. It is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. I'm going to pop it up right here. Um, this foundation looks really pretty on camera. It looks really pretty in pictures. So I can see it being a good foundation um, for makeup artists who are doing makeup solely for picture purposes or on camera, but in person I feel like it emphasizes like dry patches which is weird because mostly everyone who says they love it are dry skinned people that I've been seeing and I get dry patches right here and in my forehead in the middle and for some reason I feel like it kind of emphasizes it, sometimes it feels kind of cakey and I felt like it never was like matte enough. I felt like it still stayed kind of moist on the skin after I set it. For some reason, I just could not get it to work for me and a lot of people rave about it so I felt kind of crazy at first not really loving that foundation stick. But there are other foundation sticks that I like more than that one which is crazy because I know it's everyone's favorite. But that one definitely to me is an overhyped product that I just couldn't get on the bandwagon for. And I, especially for the price, it just really wasn't worth it to me because there's so many good drugstore foundations, um, not necessarily sticks, but good foundations, period, that I couldn't hop on board. It just kind of looked a little cakey, and the shade I got was supposed to be neutral undertone, but it's one of those neutrals that kind of leans yellow, so um, if you're like me, where foundations can tend to look kind of orangey on the skin, that was definitely one of them. Um, I do kind of want to try it again. So I was debating if I should just pick up my summer shade and try it out in the summer, but when I tried it out, it was in the winter and I definitely did not like it. The next product is a huge shocker. I feel weird even mentioning this because it is such a hyped, hyped up product, but it is the MAC Cosmetics Highlighter in Whisper of Guild. This highlighter is so hyped up. It is the most hyped up MAC highlighter that I've seen people talk about. It's a, what is it? It's an extra dimension skin finish. Now this is a pretty highlighter. It doesn't pick up well with every single brush. So I feel like it's kind of overhyped because I only have a couple brushes that work well with this um, particular highlighter. And then sometimes I feel like it just looks heavy on the skin. It's so metallic where it emphasizes my pores, where it's not a good metallic in a good way because I have some highlighters like the Nicole Guerrero and Anastasia highlighter palette where it's super metallic and intense, but I feel like it doesn't emphasize my pores and for some reason I feel like this one does. I do still wear it because I like the shade of it, I love the sheen, but for some reason I feel like it doesn't look the greatest on my skin compared to other highlighters that I have. So I definitely think this MAC highlighter is overhyped. Um, I mean, people were going crazy uh, pre-ordering this ever since the initial launch and then they brought it back. So um, I know there are a lot of dupes out there for it, so I would just personally try a dupe because the shade is pretty, but just, I don't know, for some reason I just can't get on with this highlighter. It's not my fave. The next product is a very popular primer. It is the Smashbox Photo Finish, Photo Finish or Photo Finish? Photo Focus. So it's a Smashbox Photo Focus Primer. Um, I did try this primer and I didn't care for it. I bought the travel size and I ended up 
returning the travel size because to me it just wasn't worth the 12 or 14 bucks and I would rather have a drugstore uh, primer than that one. So um, it had kind of like that silicone-y feel which isn't my favorite to begin with and I feel like it didn't really blur my pores and it worked kind of the same as the Maybelline Baby Skin one. I couldn't really see a difference in lasting wise and uh, like blurring wise and it could just be me but I just didn't see a huge enough difference to love it so um, if you do like that primer I recommend trying the Maybelline baby skin because to me they were super similar so um, if you are wanting to try a drugstore option to that one I would try that one but just overall I didn't like the silicone -y feel and I feel like um, when I use this kind of primers, my foundation kind of slides around. I guess that one's just personal preference, but I definitely didn't care for it. I think it's way overhyped, and there's a lot more primers that I feel like are better. And yeah, I don't know. The next one I wanted to mention are the Cover Effects uh, Drops. So these are the Custom Enhancer Drops. This one is in Moonlight, so these are like the highlighter drops. I was so excited to get the sample because these are so hyped up and I really, really wanted to try them. They're quite pricey just for the bottle itself, so that's why I was excited to have this sample. As you can see, the shine on it is beautiful, but um, for some reason when I blend it out, it looks kind of supernatural and... I don't know, it's just not everything that I had envisioned. Either it shears out really natural when I blend it out with a beauty blender, or when I try to leave it kind of intense, it ends up kind of looking like a streak instead of nice and blended. And when it is blended, it's a little too natural. So I like the shade of it, and I think it is nice, and I'm probably going to try this in the summer mixed in with my foundations just for a really glowy look. But I think these are overhyped, especially for the price, because there's a lot better highlighters, period. Maybe I'm just not a fan of... Uh, liquid highlighters that much but I felt like it just didn't live up to the hype I was so excited to try them because of how much everyone hypes up the highlighter drops and it just kind of fell short for me and again I don't know I would rather I mean even for a natural glow there's other highlighters that I like better so the next one is a liquid lipstick. It is super hyped up. It is the Stila Patina Liquid Lipstick. The Stila Liquid Lipsticks are supposed to be some of the best, some of the first ones out there. When I bought it, I bought it, I tried it out, and I just didn't love it. The color was beautiful, but they felt dry, and they kind of just felt like every other liquid lipstick that I have. I thought the formula was going to be really good because everyone talks about how amazing that liquid lipstick is. But for me, it was just average. There's other liquid lipsticks that I like better. There's other even nudie pink mauve type of shades that I like better so it just wasn't as great as I thought. Everyone talked about the Milani Amore Matte Lip Cream in Lust, that original initial launch that they had being a great dupe for Stila and I actually prefer the Milani one to the Stila one and I know they don't sell the Milani one anymore but I personally have the Milani one still. I bought like a backup and I just recently opened it so I would prefer to use that one over the Stila one so for me that one is super hyped up just because there's nothing special about the formula. It's pretty drying and it is opaque but I mean I have other long lasting ones from indie brands that I like way better. Okay guys, last but not least, this is going to be a huge shocker for everybody. I feel weird even mentioning that this is not my favorite because this is the most hyped up palette that I've heard. I mean, I know the Urban Decay Naked palette period is supposed to be one of everybody's favorite, but aside from that one, this one is like the most hyped up palette that I've personally heard people talk about. This is the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette and believe it or not, I consider this an overhyped product. As you can see from the front when I was showing it, mine was really dirty. I do have some dips into the shades, so I do use this palette. It's not a waste of money for me, but I definitely feel like it's overhyped. Everyone says how this is one of the best warm tone palettes, that this is their favorite palette ever, that this is the best eyeshadow formula ever, and all of those good things, but for me... Personally, being super honest, I think it's a good palette, but it's not my favorite. For some reason, a lot of the shades show up darker on my eyes than they do in the pan. So every time I go to use this, my look always comes out darker than what I'm anticipating. And sometimes that bugs me when shadows look darker on the skin than they do in the pan because it's kind of misleading. I have a couple palettes that do that and I don't really like that. Um, this one I do get beautiful looks. It does blend out nicely. I mean, I don't think this is overpriced. 
list like some of the other products that I mentioned. But um, I just, I think it's overhyped. I think it's okay. It's a good palette, but it's not my favorite and it's not the best. But definitely I don't reach for this more than my other warm toned palettes. I kind of have to like, when I look at it and I feel like I haven't used it in a long time, I kind of make myself use it, which I don't really like having a palette like that in my collection because I do like it. It's good quality, but I just don't reach for it where I feel like it's really overhyped. Um, and I don't know what else to say because it's not awful and I don't dislike it, but I don't absolutely love it. And I did expect more because the hype was so real with this palette. I thought it was going to be my favorite palette, my go-to palette, the palette that I use more than all my other palettes. But it just isn't. So guys, that is all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I have another video coming up where I talk about um, dupes that are actually better than the high-end product that they're a dupe for. So I have that video coming up soon. And I haven't filmed it yet, but that is coming up soon. So leave down in the comments other videos you would like to see. I would really like to attempt Vlogsember. And if I don't vlog every day, I would at least like to post a video every day and really try and see if I can do that. So give me all the video ideas that you would like to see um, so that way I can have a lot of videos to post in December. So yeah, guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. I do videos twice a week, so I'll see you guys then. And until then, have a great day slash night, everybody. Bye.